Well, if you've been a listener of mine for very long, you know that my aim is to get behind what is really Bible prophecy and to keep us focused on that particular goal. For the most part, I try to stay from anything that might be considered prophetic fantasy or uh, conspiracy theories or whatever the case may be. You know, somebody uh, commented in one of my videos that there was something going on uh, in the United Nations and also in Europe that looked like it could come out to be the seven-year peace agreement with Israel and many. And the name of this uh, conference or agreement, we'll call it, is COP28, which is in Dubai. It's over with now. But the goal was to put this plan of action into work uh, before the December 12th deadline. Well, the conference did go one day uh, beyond that to the 13th. But if you're following this particular conference, you know that really nothing was cemented that would have anything to do with Bible prophecy. I think what they were trying to say is that in the uh, goals of this, and remember, this is really, for the most part, this was just a set of goals. Although many in the prophetic world uh, tried to say that this was a conference that made the Paris Agreement, which happened in 2015, stronger, because it seemed like they were trying to create a seven-year type of an agreement or peace agreement rather than letting the Bible actually dictate the terms because that's really what will happen. When it comes down to the seven-year agreement, the, the Bible will dictate the terms. And the terms are that it has to be a peace agreement. And the reason why I say it has to be a peace agreement is because the Bible says that the agreement will be broken at the midway point of the agreement or basically three and a half years into it. And the Antichrist will be the one who will uh, break the agreement and he will go into the temple that has not been built yet. He will end the sacrifices and desecrate the temple. And at this time, it's likely that he will declare himself to be God. Uh, you know, many believe that when he does that, that war will break out and uh, Israel will try to prevent this from happening and um, this might bring about a world war. I don't know that that's going to be the case. It's possible that will be the case, but it's probably more likely that Israel will accept him as the real Messiah. And the reason why I say that is because 2 Thessalonians 2, uh, 9 through 12 say that because you didn't believe in the truth of the gospel and that was to be saved, that I will bring about a strong delusion that you will believe in. In other words, God, because he, because uh, I don't know necessarily because of Israel, it may be the world in general, but the the uh, ground zero will probably be Israel because they didn't uh, believe that Jesus was the Messiah, that he will bring about a strong delusion. And when he goes into the temple and desecrates it, there may be no opposition from Israel whatsoever because they may, in fact, believe it. Now, you have to remember, there will be those many who will come to know the Lord and Savior. The Bible says that everyone will take the mark of the beast worldwide, except for those who accept Jesus as Savior. So make no mistake, there will be many who will come to know the Lord as Savior. The Bible says in Matthew 24 that the whole world will indeed hear the gospel, but then the end will come. So this will actually be a true representation of the gospel being preached throughout the world, and I mean everybody will hear it. As I've said many times, there will be the two witnesses, there will be angels flying throughout the air and uh, presenting the gospel. And all, In fact, n not only will they be flying through the air, but they'll be presenting the gospel in every man's language. So it will be clearly communicated to everyone in the world. But on top of that, you'll also have 144,000 witnesses. We don't know the scope and how far reaching that their um, witnessing will be. It may be throughout the world. It may only be throughout Israel. But either way, the and the, the gospel will be presented throughout the world, and everybody will hear it. And one more thing about the two witnesses. In Israel, they will be hated. They'll be hated by everyone who rejects the Lord. And it will be by a good portion of those who live in Israel. So they will be ripe to what the Antichrist does. Like I said, there may be no opposition to the Antichrist when he actually walks into the temple and desecrates it and determines uh, and lets everybody know that he is the Messiah. You know, this is the time when, when the Bible says that you need to flee to the mountains for those who are in Israel. So there is going to be no armed conflict. At least it does not appear to be when the Antichrist desecrates the temple. It's almost like they will accept him. And you know, at some point in time, we also have to remember that Revelation chapter 13 says that the Antichrist will have a deadly wound. 
Now, just for the sake of timing is concerned, I will say that this deadly wound will only bolster the fact that people will believe he is the Messiah uh, instead of going with the uh, going in the direction of him declaring himself to be Messiah and somebody assassinating him. I mean, it could go that way as well, but I think it's probably more likely that during war or conflict or something, assassination attempt, that he is killed. And uh, we'll just say for the sake of what many believe, that after three days he'll rise again. And you know, it's unknown as to when Satan will actually enter the Antichrist, but uh, that would probably be a good time when he rises again. That will be when Satan will enter into the Antichrist. And as I said many times, most people throughout the world, except for Christians, will believe he is their Messiah. And you know, from this point on, it's going to be pretty well straightforward. And you know, throughout what the Bible says, I would take it at face value. You know, I brought up this uh, agreement with um, what's going on in Dubai, which is, like I said, the COP28, uh, Agenda 2030, because this is just more, nothing more than just an attempt to try to place an agreement with some of the facts as to what the Bible has to say. Now, you know, Agenda 2030 basically is uh, just a set of goals that really has nothing to do with peace between Israel uh, and the Antichrist in many. And certainly there's, there are no goals in there that would cause the sacrifices uh, to be ceased and for the Antichrist to walk into the temple and declare himself to be God. As I said, it's more likely that it's going to be a peace agreement that's going to somewhat calm the world down. And then at some point in the future, three and a half years later, the Antichrist is going to come in and desecrate it and declare himself to be God. Now that's the most important part of this. And the whole point of it is to bring about the strong delusion and to give the world the Messiah that they long for. And the purpose is to separate those from who are those who have accepted the Lord as Savior. And speaking of goals, you have to know the goals of the tribulation period. And the goal is, number one, to take all Christians out of the world, leave only those who aren't saved, give them one last opportunity to come to the Lord with a concise presentation of the gospel. And when they reject it, then God will bring about and throw Satan out of, uh, out of heaven. He will do what he's supposed to do, which is to infiltrate and to possess the future Antichrist, who will then be the Messiah of the world. And then, of course, Jesus will come back after he has poured out his wrath. He will judge the nations. Those who have taken the mark of the Antichrist will be uh, judged and then sent to the lake of fire. And those who accepted Jesus as Savior will then be ushered into the thousand-year reign of Christ here on earth. So basically, it's not God. Well, it's not Jesus coming back to defeat the Antichrist in a good versus evil type of scenario, but it's to rid the world of those who will not worship God and Jesus the Messiah, and then to set up a kingdom that will be solely dedicated to worshiping the Lord as Savior. Now, of course, in the future, in the latter part of the thousand-year reign, again, there will be those who will pop up who will not uh, want to serve the Lord. And again, Satan will be called upon to do his job to separate those from who will serve the Lord and who won't. And in the end, again, they will be destroyed. So these are the principles of the end times that you need to take hold of instead of a lot of these conspiracy theories that really have nothing to do with Bible prophecy. I mean, the truth has basically prevailed on COP28. That is not going to play a part in the future of Bible prophecy, nor is this Agenda 20, or I'm sorry, yeah, Agenda 2030. And no, Klaus Schwab will not play any part in what is the future of Bible prophecy either. But let me bring you some things that will. Now certainly we don't know when the rapture is going to take place, but we do know that God has clearly told us that there will be signs that will predate the start of the tribulation period. And those are, of course, wars and rumors of wars, pestilence, famine, and earthquakes in diverse places, as I've said many times. Three of the four are blowing up right now. You know, not only is th are things going on in uh, Russia and Ukraine, but now the Middle East is on fire and could become ablaze at any moment. Even the United States, UK, and other allies are getting involved in knocking down rockets and other military assets around the world. And now there is a threat in uh, Venezuela and Guyana that we may have war in the Western Hemisphere for the first time, and I believe it's been about 80 years. So we know that there are wars and rumors of wars going on throughout the world. Of course, we don't want to forget about Taiwan. We don't want to forget about North Korea and South Korea. We don't want to forget about Iran. 
And you know, it's being reported that the United States and the UK have knocked down 15 drones or more over the last couple of days. And there are more warships and ordinances that are being sent to the area to try to calm things down or protect Middle East countries from going into an explosive situation. And as I said, if you get my Gitter account, you know that I report on earthquakes on almost a daily basis, sometimes two or three. And these are not just minor earthquakes, they're major ones. And they are in divers or different places. And it's getting more and more dangerous here in the United States. And our open borders are coming back to haunt us. And don't be shocked if, in fact, there is a major terrorist attack here in the United States in the very near future. In fact, there's already an elevated alert, not only here in the United States, but also in Europe, that over the Christmas holidays, that very well may be the case. And now let's move on to pestilence. It's being reported, and I don't know how accurate this is, but here's an article that says that doctors are in meltdown as mysterious China virus stops responding to all antibiotics. And the subheading says the world has been gripped by fear over the mystery virus rocking the youngest in China's population, and now it has emerged that it is resisting all antibiotics. And you know, if it's in China, it's probably already made its way into other parts of the world, because China is very good at not telling the rest of the world about the spread of viruses uh, that occur in their country. So we'll have to stay tuned to details to see exactly how deep and wide this virus is is going to spread. That is apparently resistant to all uh, antibiotics at this time. And here's another report that says that the CDC sounds major alarm as new highly contagious COVID variant grips the U.S. So if you live in the United States, we have our own problems, as you can see, with handling any type of pestilence that is taking place. But let's also talk about the last thing, and that is the war in Israel. Of course, you know that Gaza is under attack right now, and certainly for good reason. But as predicted, uh, the world is beginning to pressure Joe Biden, and it looks like Mr. Biden is uh, falling to world pressure and telling Israel that they need to scale down this war and to wrap it up. But Israel is telling the Biden administration that no matter what world pressure comes upon them, they're going to continue to go until they finally defeat and destroy uh, Hezbollah, I'm sorry, Hamas. And I did say Hezbollah, that's likely the next step. But right now their focus is destroying Hamas and their leadership. And they claim that they will continue to govern the Gaza Strip even after the war is complete. Now, whether or not that will be the case, we'll have to wait and see. You know, I have a feeling that that may be something that becomes a part of some future peace plan that the Antichrist uh, will orchestrate and um, will usher us into the seven-year tribulation period. But let's wait and see how this war twists and turns. Like I said, I really believe... We may be looking at a war in the north as well. But we know that when, at some point in time that this uh, Gog and Magog war will have to take place, but the facts upon, uh, on the ground will have to be that Israel will have to be living in peace and safety. So it might be that after this Gaza war that they do at some point come to some type of peace agreement. And sometime thereafter that the Gaza war develops and uh, that is when God will do something supernatural on the northern border of Israel. So I'd recommend that you keep your eyes on what's going on in Israel. Stay focused on things such as wars and rumors of wars, pestilence, famines, and earthquakes, because those are the signs that are going to lead us right into the tribulation period. But of course, we know as Christians, the rapture will be taking place before that. Well, that is where we are up to date. In these last days, stay focused on the Lord. And if you don't know the Lord, today is the day of salvation. I would encourage you to come to the Lord, know the Lord today. Believe that He's your Savior, that He died for your sins. Repent of your sins. And from this day forward, begin living for Him. And you that are Christians, you get a copy of my Tribulation Period Survival Guide. Go down to the description section of this video. Select the link that will take you to my website. And get your copies of my Survival Guide. I believe it's the best one that's available. And certainly it is the most realistic as to what will really take place during the tribulation period. So go down and get it. Get multiple copies. Give them to your lost friends and loved ones. And I, and I can assure you that you'll be grateful that you did. Well, this is Terry Malone with the Calvary Prophecy Report.